Amazonas, Peru. I awake in my bungalow to the sound of chirping birds and lapping water. Just outside is the mighty Madre de Dios River, snaking its way through eastern Peru and ultimately terminating several hundred miles upstream in Bolivia. Part of the vast Amazon watershed, it is the main tributary serving this region of the Peruvian Amazon. Radiating outward hundreds of miles in all directions beyond the river lies the seemingly boundless Amazon rainforest. It's hot, humid, and beautiful. The sheer size of it all is nearly incomprehensible. I've wanted to see Peru for as long as I can remember. Stunning imagery of ruined Inca villages, grazing llamas, verdant jungle and staple dishes like ceviche and cuy has peppered my consciousness for years. Why have I traveled to this remote and questionably dangerous place? I've come searching for the quintessential things that make Peru, Peru. Once the epicenter of the mighty Inca Empire, Peru is a country rapidly advancing into the modern world, but with strong traditional roots. From the chic and modern capital city of Lima to ancient Cusco, past and present juxtapose one another seemingly around every corner. A heavy mix of Spanish and indigenous influences both felt and seen in the architecture, Inca ruins, the food, and the people. Travelers and explorers have been drawn to Peru for centuries. Francisco Pizarro originally came here over 500 years ago in search of gold, ultimately crushing the Incas and claiming their empire for Spain. Centuries later, it was American explorer Hiram Bingham in search of the fabled lost Inca city of Machu Picchu. Today, Peru is a land of extreme contrasts. Dense, triple canopy rainforest, tall, snow-capped mountains, vibrant, bustling cities, traditional versus modern, old versus new. This beautiful blend manifests into a vivid and colorful culture with warm people and sensational cuisine. Perhaps these contrasts were the draw for Bigham and decades of backpackers, explorers, and travelers after him. Did I find what I was searching for in Peru? Was it worth the wait? Let's find out. Welcome to Peru. We just landed at Lima Airport here in Peru. Um, super long travel day. We've been traveling. We woke up, we left New Hampshire where we live at like 2.30 this morning and it's currently uh, 7 p.m. So uh, pretty long travel day here. Just gonna grab our bags and off the carousel. Just got some cash, got a SIM card. We're gonna head into town. We're actually only here for the night um, because in the morning we're heading to the Amazon. So we have to come back to the airport, get another flight in the morning um but we actually have at least tonight to explore a little bit of the neighborhood that we're staying at in lima which is called mira flores which is um basically like the main touristy neighborhood to stay here in lima after grabbing our bags we met our driver outside the terminal and headed into downtown lima
traffic outside the airport is chaotic and loud. The exact atmosphere I love seeing first thing when I land in a foreign country. This neighborhood is Kalau, a neighborhood with a somewhat dodgy reputation. It runs along Lima's coast and served as Peru's first port city. We cruise through Kalau and continue making our way down to Miraflores, a long 45 minute ride through jam-packed Lima. After getting to Miraflores and settling in at our hotel, we ventured out to La Canta Rana, a well-known cevicheria in Lima's trendy Barranco neighborhood. So we just got to Canta Rana. Um, read about this place actually before we came to Lima. Um, it was mentioned in a couple blogs for where to get ceviche basically in Lima. So um, it's late. Ceviche here is really mainly sold during lunchtime when fish is fresh in the morning, it's fresh caught. Um, so they only have one type of ceviche left, which is pescado, which is just some type of fish, so that's what we got. There's like a whole, diff all different types of ceviche that they sell here. This is basically what they had left for the day. It's like almost nine o'clock at night here. Um, and it's exactly what you would think, right? It's, it's raw fish. I'm not sure what type of fish it is with onion, corn, sweet potato. It's cold, obviously, and like a very healthy dose of wine. It's very acidic and the acid essentially, the idea is that the acid somewhat cooks the fish. So it's raw fish, but it is somewhat cooked, if that makes any sense, but it is basically raw. It's very light, very refreshing actually, because it's there's so much lime and cilantro. And with a cold beer, it's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic meal. Zesty, acidic, and fresh, the ceviche was incredible. The heavy presence of lime contrasted sharply with the cilantro, onion, and fresh fish. This was an incredible introduction to Peruvian cuisine and left me quite excited to eat whatever I could get my hands on for the remainder of the trip. So this is fried yuca, yuca fritas, which is basically like a root crop you find kind of all throughout the tropics or subtropics. And we just ordered it because the ceviche, as good as it is, they're like smaller portions, so we just got some food, that's all. A short two-hour flight from Lima is the small Amazonian outpost of Puerto Maldonado. With a population of just over 85,000, it is located in Peru's southeastern Amazon basin, and it serves as one of the gateways into the Peruvian Amazon. Located at the confluence of the Madre de Dios and Tambopata rivers, the main industry here is ecotourism and small-scale gold mining, which is oftentimes done, of course, just under the watchful eyes of Peru's authorities. Lodges dot the shores of the Madre de Dios river, where travelers can come to explore the jungle and learn more about the flora and fauna of the region. All right, so we just landed um, the airport we're at is Puerto Maldonado. Um, this is one of the gateways to the Amazon. Okay, so that was, sorry, that was a little rush getting into the taxi from the airport, but all those shots you just saw were basically the town of 
Puerto Maldonado, this is one of the ways to get into the Peruvian Amazon. The other is uh, Iquitos, which is in the north of the country. But this is the Madre del Dios River here. And this is what we're going to be taking down to the lodge we're staying at. We're staying at a lodge um, about an hour or an hour and a half down the river in the rainforest. Um, where we're at now is basically my guide's or my hosts or our hosts house um and she's just gonna like brief us a little bit on um kind of the next two days and uh where we're gonna be staying but yeah this is an offshoot of the amazon it's not the actual amazon but you can see just how massive it is so yeah we have about a half an hour here and then we're gonna go to the boats and um down the river the quiet afternoon on the outskirts of puerto maldonado Lone motorboats make their way up and down the river while the scorching midday sun beats down on lush jungle. Iquitos, located in the north, is another destination for venturing into Peru's Amazon, but we'll leave Iquitos for a later time. The Madre de Dios is a vast river, snaking its way into Bolivia and eventually joining the Amazon River much further north in Brazil. After prepping for the journey upriver, we made our way onto the boats under the hot, tropical sun. The journey upriver into Peru's jungle is an incredible experience. Dense, verdant rainforest towers over you on both sides, while the muddy brown Madre de Dios stretches, as it many times seems, into infinity. Breathe in the humid, dense air under the riverboat's canopy, watching other boats journey up and down river alongside you. The only word I can use to describe this wild and untamed place is beautiful. In all my travels, I have never felt so far from home as I did in Peru's Amazon Basin. Arriving at our lodge, we slowed and docked the riverboat. Without the breeze from the moving boat on the river, the heat and humidity punch you in the face. Water gently laps against the side of the boat, and aside from the river and the birds, it's quiet. Amazon Planet is a lodge and ecotourism site in Madre de Dios, Peru. In addition to multiple bungalows and a central lodge, Amazon Planet organizes tours of the surrounding rainforest, canopy walks, and excursions to learn more about the Madre de Dios River. Now, I know what a lot of you will probably say. Ecotourism, that's not travel, but listen to me. Amazon Planet and many other lodges in this area and other regions of the Peruvian Amazon are diligently working to conserve what remains of Peru's rainforest. And a large portion of the proceeds from your stay go directly into wildlife and forest conservation. If places like this didn't exist, if people simply didn't care, the rainforest would quickly slip into extinction within a few generations. Additionally, you can find places to suit your desired experience. Ayahuasca ceremony? Visiting local indigenous villages? Yep, that can be organized too. So look, say what you will, but all I can say is this. Choose your stay wisely when visiting the Amazon. All right, so enough of that. It's okay, I need to, I need the weight. I need to lift the weight. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I mean, you said this is 11 years old. Uh, yeah. Do you have to get like, 
a lot of permits and like government regulations yeah. in order to build something like this in the yes, end. Yes, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of them. Uh, especially because there's this con connotation of uh, tourism. Yeah. Okay, number four, this is your bungalow. All right guys, so we just got to um, our jungle lodge. We're staying at a place called Amazon Planet. There are a lot of lodges up and down um, the Madre de Dios, which is the river we're staying on. Also the Tambopata River, which um, extends as a branch off of the Madre de Dios. Um, but this is all Amazonian rainforest, Peruvian Amazonian rainforest. Just got to our lodge and ch check this place out. This is just like so cool. There are lodges that kind of dot the whole area and there's the river which is what our lodge looks over i think there's actually a storm coming in now and you can hear all kinds of just what is that i don't oh wow i've never heard that sound before <laughs> there's like all kinds of animals in the jungle that's literally right there what is that All right, so here's the bungalow. So, yeah, it's pretty decent size. We have bed with bed netting, essential. Ooh, there's something out there. Do you hear that? I hear it, What yeah. is that? I don't know. Sounds like a, I don't know, like when you click on an app, like boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Bathroom, um, cold water, which is actually fine because it is like, like insanely hot here right now. And then, yeah, little sitting area. It opens up onto this like little patio. So we have this like little patio here that overlooks um, the Madre de Dios River. Um, those are some of the storm clouds that are coming in now. Yeah, pretty nice little spot here. So um, all meals are included obviously uh, because we're an hour and a half up the river from civilization. So uh, we're gonna go actually have lunch now and hopefully we get a big storm. That'd be awesome to see like a huge thunderstorm here. And there's a bar, which is really great news. <laughs> These are all tunnels leading up to that termite nest right there that they build. It's absolutely insane 20,000 termites at the same time so you need to get a lot all right my friends you want to try you can do it break it just put your finger here they don't bite they don't sting so uh -huh. they don't make anything <laughs> what's it taste like it tastes like mint <laughs> it really does <laughs> It does. It does. It, the mint is the saliva. And it's my finger too. It's minty. It comes from the saliva because the termite to protect the colony or to protect with somebody eating. Yeah. They spit it out this saliva to the ice predator. It's not bad actually. <laughs> of course you wanna get some proteins, you need to yeah. get a lot a of lot them. Of them. <laughs> Along with jungle excursions, we did a walk along a suspension bridge to a height of about 45 meters off the ground for a first-hand view of the forest canopy. Yeah, we're just walking to the top of this, um, like, canopy walk now. How high is this, Ronald? 
This one, they get it up to like 20 meters. 20 meters? It's gonna be 45 meters. At the highest? Yeah, so 45 meters to the highest point. So like 130 feet. That's high. <laughs> This thing's shaking like crazy. Afraid of heights or questionable man-made structures with ominous maintenance history? Like having clean underwear? It's probably not a good idea to say at this point that I am kind of afraid of heights. Maybe be careful before deciding to do this walk. The suspension bridge was soaking wet following a drenching rain. The floor consisted of creaking and swaying corrugated tin. This thing is creaking like crazy. And the sidewalls disconcertedly became lower the higher we went. I think I need two hands at this point. Wet, creaking suspension bridge aside, the view from the forest canopy is breathtaking. It is a completely different ecosystem and forest from the canopy floor. That was one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. It's yeah. also like wet and we're wearing rubber rain boots, but this view is definitely worth it. So we just made it to the top of this um, basically canopy walk. We're sitting at, or standing at a basically, I think 45 meters above the canopy, or the forest floor. So like 120, 130 feet. Um, and you get these like amazing 360 degree views of the canopy layer and you can hear all the birds and you can see, we've, we've seen already quite a few bird species. Birds of paradise, parrots, and innumerable other species of bird are easily visible and simply gorgeous to see in person. After spending a while in the treetops, we made our way back down the Amazon's scariest suspension bridge. An incredible experience for sure, but one trip up the bridge was enough for me. I'm literally shaking right now. Wow. <laughs> All right, so we just went on a jungle night walk, basically. We did a day walk earlier and we did a night walk to see like what nocturnal creatures are out, which is mostly just insects, which looked a lot like this. Excellent camouflage. You see? Oh, it's moving inside. So now it's legit. What? Oh my 
mommy doesn't play. Eh? No. So we just finished up dinner. So far, Peruvian Amazon has been absolutely awesome. Um, the place we're staying is fantastic. Um, we've already seen a bunch of cool stuff. So I will see you in the morning for our second day in the Amazon. Thank <laughs> you.